Welcome back, guys. I'm David McNeely. I'm Zena Daly. And Mr. Feldman, welcome back, sir. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Tell the viewers, too, if you don't mind sharing uh, when we had our, our coffee breakfast. You were open with me about some things, about some addictions. Won't you tell yeah, the viewers yeah. about that? So part of wanting to help people was is that there was a, a time in my life um, that I needed a lot of help. And um, I, at the age of 31, uh, went in for uh, treatment to deal with uh, drug and alcohol addiction. And leading up to that, I thought that I had no problem, that I could handle this myself, that nobody could understand really where I was at. All the right. times that I had seen you, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is just a surface, uh, surface always looks great. So I had no idea when you shared that, you know, when he shared that with me, right. I had no idea because you just see the smile and you see this person looks, uh, looks normal on the outside, healthy. if you will, looks healthy. And so that really is kind of a really important distinction when you talk about um, addiction is, is that somebody's insides and outsides don't really match. The other right. thing is somebody's intentions and actions don't line up. And that was really true for me. And, you know, at the beginning of this uh, journey for me where I finally surrendered and, and got some help, uh, I listened to somebody else talk about their journey. And the truth was, it was a guy from the inner city who was homeless, who was a heroin addict. I had nothing in common with him because I didn't grow up in the inner city. Right. I, I didn't use heroin. But he started to talk about his story, and I recognized in less than a minute that I was the same as him. Yeah, but you had so much in common, it's just different. I, and in that moment, I didn't feel alone, and I felt that he helped me open my mind up that there's others that I could connect with in that way. And I remember thinking at that point in time, and it was April 17th of 1992 that this happened, I remembered thinking, you know, if I ever could get this, I want to be able to help other people. And, I, you know, a lot of things have happened between then and now, but I feel really, really fortunate to be in a position to have the understanding of what my past experience was right. and to be able to use it because part of our company also helps people with addiction and mental health. We help the individuals and we help families because really mental health and addiction is a family issue. Right. It's not just one person that needs to get fixed. If everybody really takes a good look, somebody is one person away or very close to being affected with mental illness or addiction. Right. And mental illness and addiction has a certain thing to it that wants people around it to m diminish it, to make it less to push it off till tomorrow. And part of what we're about is to really help educate that this is not a moral weakness. This is something that is a disease that can be treated just like anything else. So the people in the office, I mean, it really touches my heart because we're a group of people that are really compassionate and connect with people in a way that makes what we do human. I share about what my experience is, not because I'm any big deal, but because people struggle, right? Well, that is a big deal, though. But, but people struggle, and, and what they struggle with the most is hope that it can be any different. Right. And really what we're about is we provide hope. We put on a new lens to look at, to, to show a path that is possible to come up with a new, um, a new outcome. And and that's sometimes really difficult because people get to us in this part of the business when, they're, when hope is not high. Whatever somebody might be facing, a struggle or a crisis, that they're not alone. And more than anything, and this is where we really connected on this conversation, is we're a resource. So to pick up the telephone and ask for help is maybe the most important step in really any situation, crisis, concern that somebody will have. Okay. Steve, it's good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And you, you won't be well. seeing so my much. red and blue Thank lights you. anytime soon. I, I will <laughs> not. a better driver, right? That's right. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us, you guys. You guys can keep up with the department by liking us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can sign up for Nixle.com or CrimeMapping.com for the most up-to-date information regarding the police department. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.